with the grace of Christ. We'll continue our lesson from the first letter to the Thessalonians from Apostle Paul. It is the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 3 and verse 9. Chapter 3 and verse 9. For what thanks can we render to God for you, for all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God? Night and day, praying exceedingly that we may see your face and perfect what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father Himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that He may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all His saints. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honour, not in passion of lust, but the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanliness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. Amen. Apostle Paul has great joy when he learned the good news, the good news from the church of Thessalonica, which Timothy brought to him good news about their faith, about their love, and about that they desire to see their faces. The Thessalonians want to see the face of Paul, as Paul also wants to see the brothers of Thessalonica. Great joy in the heart of Apostle Paul because the Word of God is progressing in the hearts of men. Great joy in the surroundings of Apostle Paul because the news from the Church of Thessalonica are very, very good. And Apostle Paul has no other joy. He is not happy for things that have to do with this earth and this world. He knows that these are these all, all these things will pass by. They have no everlasting reward. They have nothing good. They are just temporarily. But what is important is the work of God and the good results on the, in the work of God. What is important is the way, the way of the church and the way each one of us from the members of the church and their relationship with God. How do they stand in faith? Because many times we care about things of this world, how our work's going, our careers, how our education is going, our building site. All these things are good and we should care. But Apostle Paul is cautious and he knows very well that these are all temporarily they do not last forever. 
and God will add to you and to me if I really need them. But what is of much importance is how you walk in the presence of God. How do you stand in the presence of God? Are you part in the building of the church? Are you part in so the church can increase? Do you take part at all? And let's be careful my beloved brethren because what happens usually and it is tragic we start off very well and slowly, slowly our interests are lost and our results and our fruit. How important it is for us to examine always examine ourselves and search ourselves to see and to always see. When I started a few years ago how was I then and how was I with the fruit of the Holy Spirit in my life? How do I act in my family? Better or worse? I will say this again. Better or worse? How do I act in my family? How do I act to my children, to my wife? How do they see me in my family? Do they respect my progress in Christ? Do they acknowledge it? Or do they pray day and night so God can make me better? That is good also. But it is better for them to pray. So we can have more fruit and better results. My beloved brethren, being lukewarm creates many problems many problems. How many hours did I pray then? How many hours? How many hours did I study the Bible? How many? The worst enemy in our Christian life to the Christian who loves God is being lukewarm and has the worst results. I will vomit you out and we fall in this and we don't even understand it. What we did and they were good, now we do them and they are little. The same things. Apostle Paul has great joy because the news from the church of Thessalonica are from better to better. And he has great joy. Christ has great joy when he sees your life going from better to better and not for you to increase and to become small but does not cease. Even though Paul has good news, he does not cease cease praying because he knows very well that there is always danger danger from the hearts of men from the world from temptations from trials from the problems of this life there is always danger something might enter in your heart and start your downfall and start you might start decreasing something might happen in your life and Christ will start decreasing in your life even though you must decrease and for Christ to increase it is very easy for something to happen and for Christ to decrease and you to increase your opinion your thoughts your thoughts in plural your many thoughts your many meditations to grow and increase and you start having problem with this and that, everything troubles you and you start being problem with this and that. In result, day by day, you will lose your fruit in which God wants to give you, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, but the fruit of your lips which testify the name of Jesus Christ. That's why Apostle Paul prays 
He prays now that everything is going well. Can just imagine how he prayed if things weren't going well. How prayer is needed in our lives, for our families, and when things are going well, and even more so when they're not going well. He prays, and with full knowledge, he prays to God and Father Himself and our Lord Jesus Christ and to the Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ and He prays to direct and I like this expression Now may our God and Father Himself and our Lord Jesus Christ for them to direct our way to You because God is a Trinity there are not many gods. We do not pray to the Father and to the Son separately as if they are two different gods. We pray to the Father and to the Son as one God. And of course through the Holy Spirit. Usually a lot of brothers are confused with this and we must clear this up. Of course not in our church but other churches that even though Jesus Christ tells us baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit for them to be baptized in that way in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in Acts we read that they were baptized in the name of Jesus only and how can they say in the name of Jesus when Jesus Christ to say in the name of the Trinity the truth is that when the Acts talk that they were baptized in the name of Jesus is the baptism, the description, not the actual act because there was a baptism of John and the baptism of the Old Testament and various baptisms and there is the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ in which when you do it is in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. John did not baptize in his name, he baptized in the name of the Lord. In the Old Testament, the priests are not baptized in their name, they are baptized in the name of the Lord. In the New Testament, they are baptized in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and they call this baptism is in the name of Jesus, remission of sins, because it is a baptism of salvation. But John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. The Old Testament baptisms were baptisms for the cleanliness of the flesh. But the baptism of Jesus Christ is of a good conscience, a testimony of a good conscience. That they accuse us of believing in three gods. Those who call themselves Jesus only. Those who think that the Father went on the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ as a Father and they used a verse and said, Have you not, don't you know me? Philip, when Philip asked him to show him the Father, and Christ said, If you see me, you've seen the Father. But, my beloved brethren, this is a mystery which was hidden before the world was made that the Word became flesh. The Word would take on a body and would come to earth to save all mankind. But the Word is God and never stop being God. Never stop being God. But the revelation of God is in Trinity. When he said prophetically, Agabus enacts the prophet, thus said the Holy Spirit. What did he mean? Thus said the Lord. Not the Holy Spirit separately. God is saying these words. And when God said, I am the God of Abraham, Jacob, it was the same God then. There is only one God, my beloved brethren, but has three different revelations, and that's why we say faces. He's shown as a father, the face of a father, which expresses love, which care, comfort. So we can understand that God loves us, takes care of us, has compassion for us, everlasting. He's revealed as Jesus Christ Lord, the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it's also shown as the Holy Spirit, 
that revives people, gives them power and strength. May God keep us safe so we can stand in a healthy doctrine so we can enjoy, my beloved brethren, the grace of Christ, the love of the God and Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit. May God help us. Don't you think that Jesus Christ left His glory and came as man only? That is another kind of doctrine. All that, He was a God and never a man and came out of Mary as a spirit and that's why she is a virgin and remained a virgin to the end. He came out as a man because the Son of Man and the Son of God. Hallelujah. May God help us stand in faith, my beloved brethren. Stand in the faith of the Holy Bible, the truth of the Gospel. But do you know what the Bible says? Knowledge puffs up. It is good. We need it. Because with the truth of the Gospel, to the scribes says, you are holding the key of knowledge. The key is Knowledge is a key which opens the mysteries of the heavens. But the Word of God also tells us that knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. We shall preserve ourselves the grace of Christ in the truth of the Gospel, but we'll also preserve ourselves in the Kingdom of Heaven with the grace of Christ in love. Because God chose us before the world was made, so we can be holy before God through love. Without love, even though we know all the truth and all prophecy and we know everything and we even sacrifice all we have and even our bodies and lives, if we did not have love, true love, then we will have nothing. That's why Apostle Paul prays and says, Firstly, may God direct our way to you and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all just as we do to you. His prayer is for God to increase you and so you can abound in love not only between yourselves but to all and to all people because only in that way your hearts can be established blameless and in holiness. Love is what does this. Love will establish our hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father when the Lord Jesus comes to receive His Church. Mercy and truth. These are the characteristics of a Christian. These are what the Holy Spirit counsels us. And this is all the revelation of the Bible. Truth in a healthy doctrine, in the Gospel of Jesus Christ, and love, love towards our neighbor as ourselves, love, loving our enemies, praying and justifying every action against us, and love to one another as Christ loved us first. The lack of love means lack of holiness, lack of truth is lack of the Kingdom of Heaven. Great joy for faith, great joy for love, Apostle Paul has, but he prays also for God to increase you and for you to abound in love to one another and to all, and to all people, because only in that way will you stay in holiness till the Lord Jesus comes to receive you. Hallelujah. Continuing, my beloved brethren, leaving, I could say, passing these two big truths of the Gospel, love and truth. Apostle Paul comes now to the Thessalonians then, but the Word of God to us today is something more practical in our everyday life. Because our everyday lives, we will find problems, difficulties, but especially snares of the devil, traps, 
The devil does not stop to find methods and ways against the children of God. He hates the children of God. He hates Christ. He is the father of all lies. He is the leader of all who are full of pride. He is a murderer from the beginning. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing all this, continually exhorts us, be careful, pray and be awake. Do not fall asleep. Do not forget. Be careful. Do not become uncautious. Be careful. Brother, let me ask you a question to all of us and to myself. Are you careful? Are you careful? Are you careful how you walk? Are you careful of your life? Are you careful of your heart? Are you careful what you're thinking, your thoughts, your meditations? Are you careful of the arrows from the enemies that are flying towards you? Are you careful what the devil is whispering to you? Are you careful what reaches your ears, your desires come up into your heart? What sentiments flood even touch your heart? Are you careful? of your bitterness, lies, of accusations from the devil which comes from the mouth of man but even from your own heart. Are you careful? We did not stop hearing from the word of God this exhortation. Be careful. Be careful with your fellow students, your colleagues. Be careful what you hear. Be careful how you hear. For what you hear is what come from outside and through your ears enter into your heart. But how you hear is what come from inside and open your heart for what is going to come from the outside. Let me make this question again please and forgive me for this and it's a question in which God asked me are you truly cautious when I was praying I said Lord help me I said I will help you but are you really cautious careful God helps us God protects us God loves us God throws out the devil from us but us as a whole which is also needed to think think of it as a church but you and I are we really careful to what happened next to me for me to understand the reasons for me to understand the goal for me to understand the why why has it come so close to me and in me this thought me hearing this are you really cautious are you cautious in other words are your senses exercised? So it, it is as a habit to you for you to understand and acknowledge quickly if it's possible what is from God and what isn't. What is, what comes from outside and what comes from inside. What is the good and pleasing to God and what isn't what you hear and what you say are you careful truly careful to what you say are you careful in your actions are you careful 
Maybe are you being a scandal to others? Are you becoming an obstacle to others? Are you a problem? Do you let the scandal outside come to scandalize you inside? Are you letting the obstacle come before you and for you to fall over it? Are you letting a problem come and confuse you? Are you careful? And my beloved brethren, cautious it is, is he who stays firstly in the truth of the gospel without going left or right, being problemed and asking himself and being confused. Firstly, cautious is he who takes care of his heart to be always full of love, especially for him who he doesn't like very much, especially for that person which you don't like very much. Because to love someone who loves you a lot, that is easy. But to love someone who is jealous of you, who cannot stand you, who is not just with you, that is difficult. Do not overtake it. Be careful. Be cautious. Stand there where you were firstly confused, where you first fell, where you found difficulty. Stand there and ask help from God. He will give it to you. You will be able to go over this. You will win, but be careful. It is a need for you to win. It's not for us just to overtake it and forget about the problem. It is not to overtake the problems. We have to win the problems. Beat them. It's not to fool ourselves to say, does it matter? I don't really care. But it is through Jesus Christ to destroy the works of the devil. And especially, my beloved brethren, in our everyday lives, when there are so many temptations, so many temptations, snares and traps, Apostle Paul comes with his assurance and tells us, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort, not us, but in the Lord Jesus, that you should abound more and more, just as you received from us, how you ought to walk and to please God. This is what you should have, not for you to please man, nor for you to ple be pleased of yourself or in your logic or your thoughts. You should be careful to be pleasing to God. And that comes from what you received, from what you have known, the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Only the Gospel of Jesus Christ, only the voice of the Holy Spirit can reveal to you, can show you and give you the power to do so, to walk in a way so you can be pleasing to God. Not as we said before, and this is very important also, not to leave the problem, but to win the problem through Jesus Christ. Because with thought, assurance and boldness, Jesus Christ says, only whoever wins, I will let him sit on my throne, as I have won, and my Father gave me his throne to sit. Not whoever leaves from the war, but he who wins the battle, the war. Not who overtakes the problem, but whoever crushes the problem. Not with his power, of course. We have not this power. And we not have these false intentions to think that we can do it on our own. To think that we can. Nor do we want to fool ourselves. Or the word of God does not fool us also. Without me you can do nothing and we know that very well. We know this from experience. But even more so, the word of God assures our heart without Christ. We can do nothing. Not to win. Not to walk. Pleasing. Be pleasing to God. But we can't even drag ourselves, crawl without Christ. 
but with the grace of Christ and with our decision to walk in a way so we can be pleasing to God. With that decision in our hearts, God is pleased and He sends Christ to walk before us in our lives. Jesus Christ comes Himself and He takes care of everything, destroys the snares of the devil so you can walk without an obstacle. Jesus Christ comes Himself and through paths of righteousness He guides you in your safety in green pastures and still waters. Amen. How nice it is, my Lord, for me to walk in the way that you are pleased with me. You know, my beloved brethren, if I walk in an evil way, my wife will not be pleased. If I walk faithfully, my wife will be pleased. And I care, I care that my wife is pleased with me. If I walk in all hypocrisy and craftiness in church, you will not like me. But if I walk in sincerity and pureness, you will like it. And I care, I care to be liked by the church. But more than all of this, which are all human, good but human, what we must care about for us to be pleasing to God, the Son and the Holy Spirit, in a thousand ways to be pleasing to God and not only but to be like God. How a child can be pleasing to his father when a child looks like his father. Let's be full of compassion to love and care. Or, or who are next to us to be servants so we can be like Christ who came to serve and not to be served. A servant. If you want therefore to be pleasing to Christ, you must serve and not to wait for others to serve you. Where? Everywhere. Run. Run to do what you can do and don't let someone else do it. Why should he get the blessings? Run. Run to do what God gives you the ability to do because you know that you can but Christ makes you worthy to do so. Do what you can brother. Do not live it for someone else. It's not an ego. It is zeal. Zeal for spiritual things. And if you want to be pleasing to the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, comfort, edify, counsel, advise, guide, help. But with one compass, love and truth of the Gospel. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort what nice words Apostle Paul uses. And I'm sure that these words Jesus Christ would use also. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The commandments that we gave you, Paul says, as to be pleasing to God in the way you walk, they are not our opinions. Then say your opinion. Don't tell your opinion to anyone. You will not help anyone as to walk and to be pleasing to God. Let God, Christ, talk to him. You cannot. You cannot teach him. Teacher, the teacher is Jesus Christ. You cannot guide him. He who guides is Christ. Let him. Just pray for him. And give him to understand that only the gospel of Jesus Christ can reveal to him and always reveal to him all the truth through the Holy Spirit. You know very well for this is the will of God your sanctification 
that you should abstain from sexual immorality. You see, my beloved brethren, that sexual immorality is not something of today only. Today, of course, it has abounded. But sexual immorality and sexual uncleanliness had always been because it is the works of the flesh. As long as there was man, there was, and don't say I'm too old for this, or I am holy, I do not fall. Let's always say, my beloved brethren, may God keep us safe. May God keep us safe. To be careful, the Word of God tells us. Our sanctification, to take care of this. Own to desire in your heart, you have already committed adultery. And because, so we not be disappointed. We stumble in a lot of things. And in a lot are sexual immoralities or the works of the flesh. And because we stumble in a lot of things, let's not forget, my beloved brethren, that we have the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleans us of all sins. As long as we do with all conscience, with total assurance, that that fornication, every work of the flesh will guide us to perish, and with fear of God, and with love for the kingdom of heaven, whatever might come to touch our hearts, and it will come, whatever might come, and let, permit me to say this, rarely, but it might happen, even flood your heart. Do not be frightened, there is the blood of Jesus Christ. Do not grow disappointed, there is the blood of Jesus Christ. Just run, make haste, be ready every moment in your life to repent and to ask forgiveness from God. So our garments will be always white for us always to wear clean, full of glory, our helmet of salvation, for not to be dirty or bent or distressed, our helmet of salvation, but for it to be our glory. We have no other glory in this world, only our salvation in Jesus Christ. We have nothing else that is full of glory. Only Christ, that Christ saved us, that our name is written in the book of life. Be careful therefore, because this is the will of God, your sanctification, and you should know, each of you, how to possess his own vessel in, not the vessel of someone else, someone else's vessel. Let's be careful of this. You can do nothing for someone else's vessel. You cannot preserve me wholly. You cannot sanctify me. You cannot protect me. You can only protect yourself and the grace of Christ, I myself. So each of you should know how to possess. I like this word. Possess in his hands. His own vessel in sanctification and honor. You know, this glass or a porcelain vase, crystal vase, how we take care of it and we protect it and we clean it and we wash it, we want it to shine. But that rubbish bag which is full of rubbish, we don't care if it gets wet or torn, we're going to throw it away. But your body, my brother, the devil, wants, wants to throw it away. But Christ, in this vessel of clay, He put in His everlasting glory. He wants to transform it and make it like His own resurrected body. It's the most precious thing we own is ourselves, but our saved selves. 
to hold therefore our vessel in sanctification and honor and our spirit and our soul but let's never oversee our body our bodies never always take care of it when you are going towards Christ be always clean take care of your body always cover it to, for it to be beautiful to be full of glory and to be honorable dressed in a modest way sensible way to that's how women should women's apparel should be with clothes which are sensible modest your soul brother no man can see God only sees your soul but what other people see is your body in all modesty brother sister our children our old elder people with shame just think a grandmother to come in church wearing a mini skirt I've seen this even so someone even of a greater age and older I've seen this in sisters not in this church but I have seen it and I say why Lord I never said to my wife and I went to God and asked forgiveness because I said I judged George and I did not do well but I did question myself I said why is she doing this 60 70 years of age why why what is the reason I understand if a young girl wants to put a mini skirt on and she wants to be like for her husband she's doing it for her husband so they can be happy and a loving wife but why does a grandmother of 60 70 years of age on the road must wear a mini skirt or a grandfather wearing an earring why how careful we must be brothers and sisters to what is shown what is evident but to the same way we must be cautious the things that aren't shown are not evident I've heard people have said God does not look at the outward appearance he sees the inside God sees the inside but I can see the outside and what I see does not show someone who is modest and sensible it shows someone who's shameful not dressed in a, sha in a shameful way but if I as a man only sees the outside and sees that how much more God sees she sees the outside inside and the inner side what does he say my God keep us safe my brethren in church therefore sisters you should come beautiful but dress sensible well kept hair the same as brothers not hair all the way down to your shoulders for the men beautiful handsome well dressed clean not with clothes which cost a fortune it's not to wear a suit that that cost 1000 euro on a discount that will introduce me in the eyes of God what will introduce me in the eyes of God for, me, for my garments to be clean ironed wearing my tie without oil stains the same with you sisters sensible modestly I only wear skirts but they're just too tight where's your modesty and they are full of blotches where's your sensibility just an example now I'm saying you must be very careful my beloved brethren to walk in a way that is pleasing to God my God give us this sensibility this wisdom and to our children how ugly it would be for someone else to exhort someone you might say someone foolish 
I have done something that is not good. Then come and tell me. Go and pray for God to tell me. Because if you tell me, I will not correct my ways. But if God tells me, I will correct my ways. Let's say something else which is also very serious. Very serious, my brethren. And I think only in this, in this verse it says so clearly, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. You know, my beloved brethren, who keeps the church safe, with no policemen, nor the elders, Christ protects, keeps safe his church. You know who protects your wife in church, not you, Christ. Do you know who protects your daughter in church? Christ protects her. Do you know who protects your husband, your son, your child? That does not mean that in our midst we should not be cautioned, especially now as the church increases in number. And let's be careful, brothers and sisters. This is a chance we must take, and I must point this out, that people come in church now who we do not who they are. Mothers, keep your children. Protect them. Close to you. May God keep us safe. And He does keep us safe. He protects us. But your children, your little girls, your little boys, don't leave them and say it doesn't matter. It matters a lot. Be very careful. And as the church increases in number and people will come in who had just passed by, let's be more cautious. And for us to know always, my beloved brethren, that not so we can be at ease and we must, but so we can be frightened. Fear of God. Whoever takes advantage of his brother in such a thing, the Bible says that the Lord becomes an avenger. And we have foretold you this, forewarned you, and testified, Apostle Paul says, to know that whatever cunningness, craftiness a person has in his heart for his sister, for the wife of his brother, the daughter of his brother, in these situations, if he does not repent, he will find the Lord as an avenger before him. He we must have great fear. The Lord protects us, but we must fear God. Be careful. It is not justified. You are not justified before God at all to take advantage of your brother. Things that are that have to do with the flesh at all because Christ his church wants to in, to bring before God holy perfect full of glory without a speck or a spot or a wrinkle that's how Christ wants to bring his church before God and he gives no right to anyone to defile her to make her dirty and it's terrible, my beloved brethren, to think that Jesus can be an avenger. It is horrifying. Horrifying. Terrible. And it tells us so revealing and clearly because one of the methods of the devil is to show to all of us even the weakness, the sin, or the nakedness of our brother and sister. Let me say something else. I've seen this also. Whoever has acted in an evil way, he has been destroyed. In 20 years that I am in Christ, I've seen this. He has dissolved, destroyed as a family. He cannot stand. God not only rejects him, but he destroys him also. 
because he's faithful to his word. He cannot deny himself. My beloved brethren, let's say it twice. May God keep us safe. To keep protect our soul. To protect the way we walk. Our thoughts. Our meditations. And let's never forget ever, this is the will of God. Our sanctification. Because why this? Because God did not call us for uncleanliness but sanctification. The invitation of God in church is not, it doesn't matter, do what you want, you are in total freedom. And I wonder with churches, churches of Christ say, it doesn't matter, divorce and get married again. It doesn't matter at all. My beloved brethren, we did not divorce or get married again. We got married once and that's how we go into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah, glory be to God. With the grace of Christ. Why? Because he who rejects these things does not reject man. He does not reject the man, but rejects God himself. Whoever oversees these things, and I'll read it again, what? Instead of truth and love which guides us to sanctification, whoever oversees the snares of the devil and the works of the flesh as to take advantage of your brother and defraud your brother, you do not foresee your brother, you do not foresee man, you do not reject your brother, you don't reject man. You do not reject your brother, you do not reject man, but you oversee, make a fool, reject God the Almighty. It's not funny at all. May God keep us safe. May God keep us safe and give us, my beloved brethren, holy thoughts, holy decisions. Be careful how you look the daughter of your brother. How you see the sisters in, in church. Be careful how you see, how you watch, what you're looking at. Keep your eyes low. Keep your heart low. Live the name of Jesus Christ and the Gospel. Because what we care about, my beloved brethren, is the Kingdom of Heaven. Everlasting life, the rapture of the church, with the grace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.